welcome today to today's episode of What's Become Clear. I'm Steve Wyckoff. And I'm not Kevin Honeycutt. I'm Deb Haneke. Kevin's a little under the weather, so if you think of uh, you're, you're getting this or you're watching this, send Kevin an email, wish him uh, healthy recovery. He's a little under the weather. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of voice, and so he's a little nervous because he's actually going to be presenting this evening, I think it is. So, so do wish him well. So, Deb, you know, um, we're sitting here this morning, and last night the governor made an announcement. Yes, he did. And uh, I can tell you, Steve, I, I can't imagine that it was any surprise to schools, um, but I don't imagine that made it any easier to take either. Uh, you know, the I think the dollar figure was $205 per student. Okay. Um, I think most schools expected that to occur, but they expected $160 now or something, $150, and the rest later on, yeah. and it all came at once. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, actually, though, from the conversations that we've been having with schools over the, the last six, eight weeks, they've been preparing yeah. for this. They're having conversations. They're thinking about, but, you know, it's a little different thinking about what you might have to do and then finally finding where the rubber meets the road. Yeah, so we've been having this conversation. So what's become clear to you about this whole issue of, of budget reductions? You know, it's kind of interesting because when I think about that, um, education has always been, um, I, I almost want to use the term the dumping grounds, where whatever ails society is pushed upon mm -hmm. education to solve. And so now we find ourselves in this scenario where we continue to have all of these mandates and requirements and expectations, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to have to do it with a lot less resources. And I guess the thing that's become clear to me is that if we're going to continue to deliver at high levels, we're going to have to do business differently. So what, when you look in your crystal ball, what do you think that that doing business differently means? My crystal ball is a little fuzzy. What would your crystal <laughs> ball say? <laughs> um, well, I actually think it, uh, it it's some of the conversation we've been having with schools already. We're going to have to find ways to leverage resources mm -hmm. and collaborate with each other. And we're probably going to have to uh, leverage the power of technology to make that happen as well. We haven't demonstrated in K-12 education that we're very good at that in the past. We haven't had to do it in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of interesting um, because when we talk about leveraging technology, I did a survey here. It's been probably 10 months ago of, of the membership at ASDAC trying to determine uh, who has the ability to have some uh, two-way interactive kinds of uh, conversations with the us? The Polycom. Here yeah, exactly, the Polycom. Yeah. And what I found was that the smallest districts that we're serving were the first to have that available because they had to do that mm -hmm. in order to continue to offer robust offerings to students. And so if you don't have to do it, you generally don't look that way. Yeah. But when you have no other choice, a lot of things become possible. Yeah. You know, I, I've heard a lot of superintendents say, We've cut all the paper clips we can cut. Now we're going to make some real cuts. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, anytime you look at business, there are two major expenditures. One of them is facilities, and the other is payroll. Yeah. And um, I don't think the facilities are going away, so I think it's probably we're really going to be looking at some staffing changes. I don't know whether that's cuts or reductions, probably a combination of both. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I see districts that are uh, neighboring within driving distance that are having conversations they haven't had before about... Um, how to share resources in terms of personnel, which mm -hmm. means there's probably going to be some personnel that are, are uh, going to be let go. Um, how, how do you see virtual classes starting to play into the equation? Well, maybe you'd like to answer that question because we've actually been uh, meeting with area superintendents and, and recently curriculum directors and counselors and some of those talking about um, not only looking at virtual courses, but also identifying some that already exist out there. Yeah. I think we're probably going to be looking at what, what already exists. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're doing the big project, the Career Courses Project, with the with the, the most of the two-year schools and Fort Hayes State University. Yeah. It, what's the update on that, by the way? Well, uh, we are rolling along. I mean, we, we, we had a meeting last week that we had over 80 people representing K-12 schools, and so the, the momentum is, is, is gaining, be, and part of it is schools were thinking about they would have to cut elective teachers. And by having those career courses delivered virtually from colleges, they could replace teachers with courses that kids would work on virtually. I think what's happening now, though, is the conversation's turning to how do we reduce core content teachers? And in my lifetime, we've never had to do that. Absolutely. So I think we're going to see, I think there's an excellent chance we're going to see school districts come together, create virtual courses in the core content areas, but facilitate those with teachers who are still on staff, 
but they may not be face to face. They may be facilitating kids from across the state. And I think we're going to see the, a reduction in the number of teachers, even in the core content areas. Mm -hmm. Which that also means probably for some of those teachers that are remaining, there's going to be new skills that they're going to have to yeah. master as well. Absolutely. Not only in creating the courses, but then facilitating those courses. Yeah, because facilitating that is a lot different than standing and delivering. And, you know, we, we've talked with the, with the school districts that are working on the Career Courses Project. When you have kids in your building, but they're working on a virtual course, so they're, they're, they're in a classroom somewhere, there is an adult supervising them. Mm -hmm. The key component is that adult supervising them. Mm -hmm. If that adult engages with the students, keeps tabs on them, uh, interacts with them, you will see successful kids. Uses questioning as opposed to giving Ab answers. And, absolutely. You know. all, all of the good strategies, those Socratic methods, mm -hmm. um, we will see kids be successful. Mm -hmm. If we have kids that are just sent to a room to work and nobody really engages with them, our kids will not be successful. Mm -hmm. So. That, that's a role we're not used to playing. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because uh, I had a conversation with an individual from a school district that has had a learning lab where students were learning some things virtually and that's exactly what yeah. they relayed to me was what we've learned over the years is that the body that you put in the room is what makes all the difference. Yeah, you know, we, we've always had some opportunities virtually, but I think the big difference is going to be more core content mm -hmm. areas will be offered virtually and then the scale of the number of kids taking stuff virtually mm -hmm. is going to be something we've never seen. It's going to be really interesting to see how we adapt to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was thinking as you were kind of giving us an update on what's happening with the Career Coalition and the collaboration between post-secondary and, and particularly the 912 um, sector as well, that's not initially what the conversation uh, started as. It really wasn't about solving the financial crisis. It was really about meeting the state board mandates. Yeah, it, it was built around the idea that we've got to do a better job preparing our kids for the careers that they are choosing. Mm -hmm. And that was a way to, to jumpstart them and getting those courses. The other, the other part of that conversation was, and we've, we've heard this conversation for years, the wasted senior year. How can we start to engage kids and utilize that time that we have them, especially as seniors, in a career path? But it really has turned in a way for schools to still provide quality service but at a, and, and hopefully be able to re reduce costs for the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think it's been maybe a year and a half ago we had a superintendent ask, um, why isn't it possible for the best teachers in Kansas to be available yeah. to every student in Kansas. Have we reached that day? Um, yeah, we, you know, we may be at that point. When, when we develop these, these courses, um, at least in my vision of how this might work, it will be a cadre of the very best teachers in that content area that create the online course, and then certified teachers in that area would facilitate those courses. So we're not talking about the Career Coalition piece at this point. We're actually talking about high schools Sharing resources, yeah, school to school. and okay, yeah, and school to sense. school. I, um, other areas that we might share, what are you know, because we, we think about the direct instruction, but personnel issues or, or per, per, personnel costs occur in other areas counseling, curriculum directors, um, instructional coaches. What, what do you see on the horizon for those areas? Um, I think that a lot of sacred cows are going out the window. I mm -hmm. think in board goal setting, we've even heard that conversation. And so I think all bets are off and everything is possible. And there are many of those items that you suggested are, or that you shared with us are actually, um, you, you need to have them available, but they don't necessarily have to be in your right. employee. So you've got to have the services. I'm going to give you the pick of the week. Okay. Since it's uh, beginning of uh, basketball season into football season, the pick of the week is. is this. We're going to see an increase in tech coordinators, tech, tech services in districts because we're going to utilize so much more technology to do things really well virtually. I'll, I'll, I'll write, write that one that. down. I'll write that hey, down. thanks for joining us for uh, this episode of What's Become Clear.